Hi, this is Pris from Upstream at www.upstreamca.org and this is number 11 uh, on healing and deliverance and Mary Garrison in her book is right at the place of divination and then familiar spirits that are mentioned in the Bible. So I'm going to share what um, I have on that and then we'll read the little bit that she has there. <clears throat> Divination. I have an article online, it's called Divination Definitions. And divination is the word kasam, Q-A-S-A-M um, in the Hebrews, Hebrew um, version, 70, 80 strongs. It appears 31 times in biblical Hebrew and divination was a parallel pagan practice to prophesying, in other words, a counterfeit. Kasam is seeking after the will of the gods in an effort to learn about the future, especially their action or divine blessing on some future event. Joshua 13, 22. It is evident that diviners conversed with demons. We can see this in modern times in Wicca, Satanism, and Hinduism, not exclusively, but these are best examples. Hindus will chant the name of a demon deity over and over again. We talked about that. Um, and... and until it comes and takes over them and they writhe on the floor and they do this to gain power from these whom they see as gods when jesus said do not pray as the heathen do repetitious prayers i think this is partly you know what he meant and also yoga is involved in um in a different way um doing the same thing where you're actually mimicking uh, the position of a certain God that they worship. First Corinthians 10 20 says, but I say that the things with the, which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to demons and not to God. And I do not want you to have fellowship with demons. This is the reason we've been asked to not eat, you know, food sacrificed to idols as it is cursed and can bring severe consequence to us, causing us to be tormented. Don't eat food sacrificed to idols, i.e. Buddha. If you see a Buddha in the restaurant, chances are the food there could be, not always, but could be, uh, sacrificed to him. And in Hindu restaurants, the same. It is one of the few things new Christians in the New Testament were cautioned against, even though they were exempt from circumcision, so it must have been important to God, right? And the practice of divination may involve the offering of... Um, a sacrifice to the deity on an altar as in Numbers 23.1. Uh, plus, it may involve the use of a hole in the ground through which the diviner spoke to the spirits of the dead, uh, for Samuel 28.8. At other times, a diviner would shake an arrow, stones, consult with household idols, you know, modern days read tea leaves. Uh, they actually study the livers of dead animals, um, as the witch and Robin Hood Prince of Thieves did. Um, and that's augury, Ezekiel 21, 21. And then divination was one of man's attempts to know and control the world around him and, and people or the future apart from true God. It was the opposite of true prophecy, which is essentially submission to God's sovereignty. The tribe of Dan in Judges 18 and 19 is a good example of people wanting to have their own way apart from God and worshiping idols, the works of their own hands. For this, Dan was blotted from the list of the 12 tribes of Israel. And the tribe of Joseph's son took that tribe's place. So we see in the New Testament list in Revelation, if you look at Revelation, and, and the different tribes that it lists, you know, want the stone for this tribe and whatever, there is no Dan. Okay. Divination is used of Balaam in Numbers 22, and once his own resolve to make money was replaced with submission, God sent him on his way. There are many today who need to resolve to not practice their gifts for money. In the New Testament, the Greek word for divination is python, puthon, 4436 strongs, which is in English is python. In Greek mythology, puthon was the name of the python serpent of, or dragon dwelling in Pytho, P-Y-T-H-O, at the foot of Mount Parnassus, guarding the oracle of Delphi and slain by Apollo. Thence the name was referred to Apollo himself. Later the word was given to diviners or soothsayers. So they were called pythonesses. 
Um, since demons are the agents inspiring idolatry, okay, um, it was given to them. The young woman in Acts 16 was possessed by a demon instigating the cult of Apollo and thus had a spirit of divination. The following is from um, Zondervan's Bible Encyclopedia on Divination. And it says that divination is related to magic, M-A-G-I-C, but it is distinct from it mainly in that the latter attempts to produce certain effects while the former seeks knowledge. Nevertheless, practitioners of one also might engage in the other, like in Hinduism, or I mean like Houdini uh, methods. Okay, now there's specific terms for different methods, and one is Kresmology, C-H-R-E-S-M-O-L-O-G-Y, is prognostication by seers and through oracles that may be divination to the extent that information is sought out. Prophets were formerly called seers and were sought to ascertain God's will, for Samuel 9.9. Seers, like prophets, could be false, and Micah 3.7 links them with diviners to whom God refuses to answer, oracles, or messages from a deity. The word also signified the person or place who transmitted them. Ouija boards would be like this. Okay, and then oneromancy, O-N-E-I-R-O-mancy, uh, M-A-N-C-Y, dreams were thought to convey divine messages. These frequently needed interpretation, like with Joseph and Daniel. In the false interpretation, one would sleep in a temple uh, called Incubation, hoping for a dream from the resident deity, the god of healing. Asclepius was thought to especially communicative, be communicative in this regard. And alias Aristides, a hypochondriac orator, was related, has related in his sacred discourses how Asclepius instructed him regarding treatment. <laughs> So <clears throat> Aristides might not be the best person to follow for an example, medical doctor, okay? Edgar Cayce would be a modern day example of such a person. He was uh, appeared to by a beautiful woman spirit. Satan disguises himself often as an angel of light. And in this case, the woman I believe was the spirit of divination as a child and instantly he became able to remember things on the pages of books that he hadn't even read. <clears throat> and he was studying when before he had difficulty in learning, okay? And then as an adult, he would lay on a couch, fall into a trance after praying for a sick person, and he would say, I saw this in a, in a movie about um, prophecy, and it was a worldly movie, it was, you know, so it was showing both divination and prophecy. We are going down the street, we are going up to the house, we see the liver is diseased, all right, that's how he would talk in the, mo in the movie. You know, we're seeing this and we're seeing that. And the thing is, we is not I, okay? So that means he was accompanied by, what? Demons. He was moving in divination. And anyone who received healing from him received a spirit of div divination and familiar spirits, most probably, even though they were miraculously healed. He is a good example of what we see in false signs and wonders in the days ahead. Because um, demons cause disease, so they can also take it away. God, have mercy on us. Because there's too many people that would go running off into this. C uh, is astrology. It was an ancient means which gained popularity in the Hellenic period, uh, the Greeks. And on the assumption that stars and planets were in harmony with the earth and mankind, the character and fate of an individual or even a whole nation were determined through a horoscope based on the signs of the zodiac. In reading horoscopes, I call them horrible scopes, due to the spirits that come with practicing this or having anything to do with astrology and psychics is forbidden in Mosaic law. Okay, Isaiah 47, 13, New King James says, You are wearied in the multitude of your counsels. Let now the astrologers, the stargazers, and the monthly prognosticators stand up and save you from these things that will come upon you. Okay, that's a scary place to be. Verse 14, Behold, they shall be a stubble, the fire shall burn them. They shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame. It shall not be a coal to be warmed by, nor a fire to sit by. In other words, it's not going to be uh, comfortable. He's talking about hell. So D is necromancy, okay, was consultation with the dead. And this was done through a medium who received messages through a familiar spirit and was severely condemned in the Bible. 
Modern times would be to attend a seance, practicing Ouija board or practicing channeling or getting in touch with your spirit guide, which are is common in native Indian religions and in Hinduism, Buddhism, and new age, which is actually old age Hinduism. Um, and necromancy, uh, there, there was that guy, uh, remember on TV for a while, I don't know if he's still on, that was talking to the dead of, of people in the audience. They said, oh, I see your grandmother and she says this, blah, 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 blah. That's not who he's seeing. It's like Saul at, at, at Endor. Okay, haruspicy was a study of H-A-R-U-S, uh, it's like haru, H-A-R-U, spicy, S-P-I-C-Y, was the study of the entrails of animals and especially hepatoscopy, so studying livers, studying their guts provided a means of per impersonal divination used widely from the Babylonians to the Romans. At one time, the liver was considered considered the seat of life, and since sacrificial animals were used, hepatoscopy was a religious practice. The Encyclopedia Britannica mentions it as a part of Etruscan diviners' practices. They also interpreted all portents of unusual phenomena of nature, especially thunder and lightning. They were said to have learned it from being named Ta being named Tages, T-A-G-E-S. It never came became part of the state religion, although augurs were. Later, the art f art fell into disrepute, and under the empire, however, were ex there existed a collegium of 60 haruspicers. However, it was never a state priesthood, but a body of salaried expert advisors. Yuck. Anyway, augury is another one. And augury was the analysis of the movement of animals, especially birds. And Encyclopedia Britannica states that augur comes from Augustus, and it seems therefore originally to have meant an expert in fertility magic rather than a diviner. The natural region to look to for signs of the will of Jupiter was the sky where lightning and the flight of birds seemed directed by him as a counsel to men. The mere appearance of certain birds indicated luck, um, good or bad, and it was singing also in the sound of birds made that were important to them. And then omens and portents, uh, G, were many kinds, um, including the uh, the above two things. A portent was a portent was an omen of great or supernatural character, such as earthquakes or heavenly phenomena, like an eclipse. Um, typical omens were involuntary human actions, like a cough or a hiccup, the actions of animals or other impersonal occurrences, you know, like old wives' tales they used to call this, but it isn't just old wives' tales, it's divination. Um, oh, you, you cough, that means this and this is going to happen. That's um, the omen important thing. Divination by human signs is called cladon, clad, cladon, Nomancy, <laughs> C L E D O N O M A N C Y. Since one who had decided on a course of action would be more affected um, by a contrary omen, they had especially portents frequently took on a negative character. And then H is mechanical means, like hydromancy is divination by water, pyromancy is observation of fire as divination, and cleromancy, which includes the use of plates or rods drawn at random, and then rhabdomancy, R-H-A-B-D-O, excuse me, mancy, M-A-N-C-Y, is interpretation of the position of objects like sticks, straws, rods, or arrows, and in general, any casting of lots or of dice, um, drawing straws. And Micah 5, 12, 13, NIV says, I will destroy your witchcraft, and you will no longer cast spells. I will destroy your carved images and your sacred stones from among you. You will no longer bow down to the work of your hands. Isaiah 44, this is the last. Sing, O heavens, for the Lord has done it. Shout, you lower parts of the earth. Break forth into singing, you mountains, O forest, and every tree in it. For the Lord has redeemed Jacob and glorified himself in Israel. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, he who formed you from the room. I am the Lord who makes all things, who stretches out the heavens, who spreads abroad the earth by myself, who frustrates the signs of the babbler and drives diviners mad, who turns wise men backward and makes their knowledge foolishness, who confirms the word of his servant, and performs the counsel